Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Grace and I'm the Intuitive Lens here on YouTube to talk about the weekly astrology. We also do some tarot readings, pull some oracle cards. Um, this week we're primarily going to talk about the full moon eclipse in Taurus that's coming on October 28th. But before I get into that, I just want to give you a little bit of an update. If you watched last week's video, you know that I had a little bit of a healing crisis. Um, a healing crisis to me is anything that um, anything that's like becoming aware of uh, spiritual, mental, physical need for me to direct my attention to something that is urgent. And at the same time that that was happening, we saw the war unfolding, you know, in Israel and Palestine. Good God. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a note I want to make here. There's a couple things I want to say. I hope it comes out as organized as it seems in my mind. But, you know, we are living astrology. And some people will say that, um, you know, we'll dismiss it. We live in a culture of dismissal, honestly. And there's many angles we can talk about that in. But um, I just want to point out that Mars was squared Pluto on the 10th at the same, or was it the 8th? It was very recent. At the same time Pluto stationed direct, there's a lot to say about the planet Pluto um, as a generational planet, as something that represents power structures. Uh, it's in the sign of Capricorn and is moving into Aquarius, which essentially means and, uh, means and uh, what I hope to illustrate is just how we are moving from away, moving away from paradigms that exploit and dismiss, um, and moving more towards our humanitarian. These demonstrations that we're seeing, we're awakening collectively to our humanitarian um, period. I don't know how I want to say that. This is really important stuff, this like this living astrology. It's important to me. I, I see it all the time. It's how I learn astrology. It's how I hope that you are learning astrology and, and, and the reasons you're tuning in and watching this, hopefully. And um, the other thing I want to say before we get into talking about the full moon eclipse is to also just backtrack a little bit and talk about the eclipse portal as a whole and the new moon eclipse in Libra that was, you know, a week ago from today's um, recording, but ultimately two weeks prior to the full moon eclipse in Taurus. It's Libra, the, the eclipse happens in, um, eclipses happen usually on the axis, on opposite axes. So we're, we're, if it's new moon in Libra, it should be the full moon in Aries. Or rather, you know, it would be the opposite full moon in Aries, new moon in Libra, in that order. But what we're seeing is the end of a much larger cycle where we're shifting axis, axes from Taurus Scorpio into Aries Libra. Since January of 2022, when we first entered the Scorpio Taurus axis, since then we have been learning. Um, we have been delivered lessons around trust and vulnerability and risk, about security, um, about our own insecurities at the same time, who we can trust. We've been also um, unveiling in some ways our own, deep, the deeper parts of our psyche that crave security and that can even ways that we are um, at times manipulative of others in order to get what we want. I'm not saying you or anyone is deliberately manipulative. This energy can come um, quite innocently. And I think it has a lot to do with conditioning as well. I'm not saying there aren't evil people out there who are manipulating people because there are, but let's just look at it from like this broader perspective of how, just how energy works and how when we work, learn to work with our shadows, we become fuller parts of ourselves. Consciousness is just awareness. We say this all the time. The fact that you have become aware of something 
is the unfolding path to your enlightenment and it is not a solid state it is um, something we move through because as humans we cannot help but move through time all right all right all right i'm getting onto a tangent but i guess the point i want to make about the new moon in libra uh, that had just passed and we're in this eclipse portal and in my reiki share group that i host on meetup we talked a lot about this we are really being asked to see more possibilities for our future things right now seem pretty bleak and maybe even regardless of what's going on in the world maybe you've been going through an incredibly tough time in your personal life um you wouldn't be alone i don't think anybody is truly alone i think we all deal with our own versions of what that means. Uh, but then especially if we look at it from like this global perspective, it is affirming that we are all moving in some direction. And so this idea of embracing possibilities with the new moon in Libra that just passed, I just want to reiterate this because it's so important. We're asking ourselves these questions, who am I becoming? What possibilities are there for me? How do I see the four, third, third, fourth, fifth option in whatever it is that you're going through? Because it's there. If you train yourself to see beyond the duality, the black and white of it's either this or it's that. If you can see past your own tendencies to um, go all in or nothing, this is so Plutonian, like so Pluto energy. It's um, extremely visceral. It's extremely um, just energetic, and <laughs> I have a I have a lack of words because um, it's really challenging energy, and we're all navigating this together. Okay, so that's all I want to say about about that. Now moving forward, the full moon eclipse. Okay, the full moon eclipse in Taurus, it's happening on Saturday, October 28th. It's happening in five degrees Taurus, so go ahead and look at your chart, see where five degrees Taurus is, what house is being illuminated, but otherwise, collectively, it, it activates our second house. As the culmination of the Scorpio-Taurus axis series of eclipses since last year, since the beginning of last year, this is the final like showdown. That's how I see it. Second house of our values, core values. What have you learned about what you care about? What have you learned about what you find beautiful? How do you protect that which is beautiful? I have a lot of, um, I should mention this now. I wrote a blog. These are my show notes. Um, and more than that, I've put in here the transit chart um, transits influencing the full moon eclipse in Taurus, how to work with the full moon eclipse in Taurus, reflection questions, affirmations, suggestions for intentions uh, if you do release rituals. And then I've also got this impact chart at the very bottom so that you can take a look um, at your natal chart and use this impact chart as a reference to find out what exactly is being activated in your chart. Okay, let's, let's see where we go. <sighs> Rejuvenating rain. Clear the past, heal the present. I say this all the time. Heal yourself, you heal the world. I'm going to talk a lot about, and I have talked a lot about, and often do think about the connections between microcosms and macrocosms and, you know, the largeness of the universe and then the just the most minute like smallest details of our of our lives and so we have surrendering to the journey release control yeah you know this makes me think about how um a lot of times we feel we're not in control this is not a week to assert control or dominance i think pluto can definitely bring those kinds of themes to the surface. It may feel like we need to grasp for control 
while while things are changing and this can manifest as you know some kind of real nastiness i think just surrendering to the journey is great advice Rejuvenating rain makes me think about this transit of the Sun square Pluto also in Capricorn. This is significant transformation and every time we have a full moon we are clearing something that we no longer want to make space for. Bad habits, past situations, anything that was inhibiting us or preventing us from moving forward. Because Pluto is square the moon, it is also square the Sun and so it is undeniable the impact of Pluto during this time. Let's get into our reading. I'm doing my direction spread today. All the changes. Uh, direction spread is a nine card spread. I'll, I'll walk you through it once I pull all the cards. We have the Ten of Swords in reverse, the Moon in reverse, Ace of Swords in reverse. Oh Lord. King of Pentacles. There he is again, Ace of Pentacles in reverse, uh, King of Cups in reverse, Hierophant in reverse, the Five of Swords, sorry, not Five of Swords, Five of Wands, and the World in reverse. Are you kidding me? As the outcome. That which is left unaccounted for will become accounted for. Um... You know, Pluto is associated with the judgment card, and even though judgment is not here, we can talk about the principles of of the card judgment. It is this great awakening. I've talked already about this great humanitarian awakening uh, for us as humans. Um, over the last few years, I mean, I've seen it and I've experienced it myself. You know, massive rifts in uh, friendships, relationships, occurring due to a difference in uh, values and levels of awakening to what's really here. What are you willing to put on the line? The Five of Wands indicates that there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of discourse, there's a lot of opinions, there's, a, there's potentially arguments and that it's not going to feel, this transformation is not going to feel satisfying necessarily. Don't let that discourage you. Growth is not comfortable. It's quite the opposite. Take my injury, for example. I know that I'm experiencing a certain high level of discomfort kind of all the time right now. But it's not stopping me from going to yoga. It's not stopping me from doing body work. I am doing it very carefully. But in some ways, it's increasing my commitment to taking care of myself. So that's sort of the energy that's here. There, it's not a discomfort. There's, there is tremendous power, though. It's the King of Pentacles is showing up in the position of what's working right now. The King of Pentacles here represents what's working is um, I think that this period of time is revealing our collective power. Uh, let's go to the beginning. Um, the first card, Ten of Swords in reverse. This is uh, another challenging energy. It indicates that the um, worst is behind us. You know, uh, in this position, the position of this spread in the, fir the first card is, where do you think you are? <laughs> In some ways, you know, and I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I'm going to read it how I see it. Um, I don't believe that the worst is behind us. I think the worst is yet to come. I think that there's, there seems to be a sense of relief, whatever that means for you. Uh, but there's still more ahead. So where are we really? The moon in reverse. So I think there's confusion here. Moon, and, moon represents everything that is unstable and unknown. It is our uh, subconscious. It's our fears. In the reverse, it's sort of just showing me that we're in a position now of dealing with these things. The worst isn't over. It is actually ahead of us. The work 
of the subconscious, subconscious healing is a continuous process, no doubt. Challenges we currently face, Ace of Swords in reverse. Yeah, again, more confusion, lies, deceit. This is exactly what we're dealing with on a collective level. The thing is, though, um, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, it's going to become increasingly more difficult for liars and cheaters to stay hidden. Um, Mars is in Scorpio currently, which means we're able to sort of see through the bullshit. Um, we can kind of see through the, that veneer um, and that. Let's keep going. I talked about the King of Pentacles already of, uh, of what's working. This is power. What's working is that we're awakening, we're, what's being illuminated is our personal power. Where we thought there was no power or less power, we're actually more powerful than we think. The spiritual lesson we now face, Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Yeah, I mean, essentially opportunity, right? More power. The opportunity to uncover power. How to show up for this opportunity. King of Cups in reverse. I'm really not sure what to make of it um, with so many cards in reverse, except that things can seem ex especially confusing. But otherwise, the King of Cups, sorry, the Knight of Cups moves with truth leading his heart. So again, we see the theme of truth and authenticity. This was a theme that's spilling over from last week, especially. You know, when I see when the feeling of it in reverse, if I'm going to put it back in reverse. Typically, the Knight of Cups is very romantic. This is not a romantic reading, unfortunately. The feeling of this card in, in reverse then feels like that energy of sacrifice. Again, coming from last week, it's like, what are you willing to put on hold in order to do the necessary and difficult work? The Knight of Cups kind of wants to take the lazy river, you know? I'm not saying the Knight of Cups is lazy. It, there's a lot of vulnerability in the energy of the Knight of Cups to say, like, here's this, you know, grand gesture. Here's my heart on my sleeve. Here's everything. But to withhold that in order to serve some greater purpose is really more the feeling that I'm getting here. Uh, where are we going? I can't make this stuff up, guys. Um, the Hierophant in reverse. The Hierophant is Taurus, by the way. We're heading towards the full moon eclipse in Taurus. The Hierophant, rep let me turn this around so you can see the imagery, but it's in reverse. The Hierophant shows like this figure who's got his hands up, he's speaking, it's an orator. This is spiritual authority. This is a card of tradition. This is the card of um, the integration of church and state. This is, you know, Taurus also represents the throat chakra. So where are we going? Yeah, we're being more vocal. This is a this card in reverse is the opposite of tradition. It's rebellion. It's doing things differently, like not doing them by the book. We're seeing this energy of reinvention. This is where we're going. And how are we getting there? The five of wands. <clears throat> so I kind of started reading this, reading this spread from the end because I wanted to explain what was ultimately happening, this outcome of something not accounted for will soon end or is ending. The world in reverse actually indicates that something isn't ending. But in this case, in this reading, what I'm really seeing is the fight to, to end, to put something to an end. <sighs> Rejuvenating rain and surrender to the journey. Ask yourself 
for this full moon, this for, this forthcoming full moon eclipse. And again, I have uh, more advice on how to work with this full moon um, on that uh, blog post, affirmations, release ritual, and, and reflection questions. But I want to add, just based on this reading, we all have to ask ourselves at this time, what comfort, Taurus is comfort, what are we willing to sacrifice to fight for a better for a better and more just world? Sometimes sacrificing comfort is, you know, making donations, spending less money on excessive things like luxurious things to, to, to donate if you can. Sometimes, and also at times, um, Sacrificing something means working on yourself instead of mucking around in other people's situations. You know, pay attention to your side of the street. Remember that the, the microcosm is a reflection of the macrocosm. What is above, so, uh, as above, so below. I really do believe we focus on what's here, what's in front of us, and slowly we make waves for greater change. Um, so I know that, you know, today's video, today's reading and delivery is very different than what I had gotten used to doing. It was intentional to sort of break that habit. Um, let's see how this channel wants to evolve and what else is shifting at this time. Thanks for joining me on this ride. And this is probably a good time to mention that I'm going to be traveling pretty soon. And so I am not sure if I'm going to be able to keep up with weekly readings. I will let you know, or you will just know, because they, there either will be videos or there won't be videos. But um, just in case, if the videos just stop happening, then you know why, okay? Thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate all of your energy and support um, over this time. So thank you, and I'll see you again later. Bye.